Hello plant community, thanks for tuning into this channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Pam and welcome to episode number two of Curiosity Grew to Plant segment. Hey, by the way, if you haven't had a chance to check out my first episode, please by all means take a look at it and comment below and let me know what you guys think. Um, this is something new that I'm trying out and I just want to get some feedback from you guys. But this is Curiosity Grew the Plant. Um, segment where I take one plant and I put the spotlight on it to a plant that I feel as far as out of my collection is very de deserving of this spotlight. So let's just jump in. The uh, star of the show is this Chlorophytum orchidostrum or aka the Mandarin spider plant. You guys, honestly, I gotta say before I even start giving into some information about this plant, I encourage you guys, if you don't have this plant and you are a new plant current, this is a plant to get, especially if you're one of those plant people that do not like flowers or anything, but you wouldn't mind a little bit of color in your sea of green, this plant does check the box. Look how beautiful it is. I really love the beautiful, uh, green leaves and then who can deny that actual like creamy orange like color now let me just get right into it you guys now this mandarin spider plant is part of the chlorophytum genus which has roughly over 100 species um, there are several uh, common names uh, for this plant as well such as the orange spider plant the fire flash fire glory and sierra leone lily um, just to name a few. Hey guys, I also have a fun fact. Did you know that chlorophytum comes from the Greek word chloros meaning green and futon meaning plants? I thought that was pretty cool. I like to add fun facts if I'm able to even find them when I do the research for this plant. Now the origin of this plant, you guys, is actually southern and western Africa, specifically Sierra Leone, hence one of the common names and Tanzania. Now this plant tr blooms traditionally from June to August and they have these tiny cream to greenish uh, white flowers. These blooms also produce seeds from pods that can be used to grow new plants. Now under the right condition you guys, this plant can grow to be about a foot and a half tall as well as wide. And as you can see from this plant you guys, look how beautiful it is. And also too, another fun thing, um, piece of information, the leaf itself can actually grow between two to four inches wide. So this is a very beautiful, compact, yet full plant. Um, now let's get right into the care tips for this plant, you guys. Um, the light. Bright, indirect light is required for this plant. Um, it is a perennial, so if you choose to plant this plant outside, make sure that it is in some type of a shade because direct sunlight will burn this light. Now for me, you guys, I do have it sitting in my dining room where it's getting dampled um, light from um, my window in there, but I also have it like almost diagonally across from one of my fancy lights, um, and it tends to love it. Now watering. Um, you want to water this plant, or at least I water this plant um, when two inches of the soil is dry. Now, full disclosure, you guys, I am by not all means a botanist, but I am sharing with you guys my experience and any care tips that I've learned along the way um, when I do take care of these plants. So you have to make your own judgment as far as your environment, as well as soil and all of those things may be quite different from mine, so the care may be slightly different. But if you give it a try, and hopefully you try some of these tips and it maybe it might work into your favor. So, yeah, so like I said before, I watered this plant when it's about two inches of the soil is dry. Um, now, let's talk about the soil. The soil, I would use my regular potting mix, mix which would be like my miracle Grow, and about 25% perlite. But because I don't do a lot of different changes for my uh, planting soil and my uh, amendments that I do use, I pretty much use the same across the board with all my plants just to make it a little bit easier for me. I know that I'm a little bit heavy handed with my planting mediums, so I do add uh, perlite and orchid bark and sometimes pumice in my soil. So since I know that I add more than what I'm recommending, the 25% 
of perlite, and that's if you have it in a regular like nursery pot or something like that. Because I know I'm heavy handed with um, my planting, my potting amendment, so to speak, I have it in this glazed pot. It's actually a glazed pot. It does have a drainage hole um, at the bottom. Um, the reason why I did do that is because I know that I can be heavy with adding my extra amendments and that it would be a little bit too area, airy for this plant. And so I put it in this uh, glazed pot to hold on to the moisture a little bit longer so that I wouldn't have to worry about watering this plant every time I turn around. Now, as far as humidity, it can take the average or regular humidity in your house, I believe, if your humidity is at 50%. Now, currently, like I said, I have this plant sitting in my dining room and the average humidity, which I do have a, um, a humidity, uh, I guess, tracker, one of those calculators where it tracks the temperature and all of that in my dining room. And for the most part, on average, it does range at 50%. Um, so it seems to love it. It doesn't give me any issues. The only humidifier that I do have running, you guys, is the one that I actually have up here that's in my um, sunroom. Uh, but right now, like I said, it loves the average humidity in your home. If by chance your home does not um, have that amount of 50%, um, you, you might be okay if it's in the 40, 45-ish range, but I probably would not go any below than that. You may want to just invest or maybe try to put this plant by a humidifier. Um, but yeah, but right into the temperature, you guys. Um, keep in mind, this plant is a tropical plant, considering that it did come from um, certain parts of Africa. You want to keep in mind, do not have um, this plant in temperatures below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think that's pretty much fine. That's usually the common, I, I would hope that's like the common um, temperature that we have in our homes. And this should be doing quite fine. Now, fertilizer, you guys, I use a quarter strength every time I water my plant. I use, um, what is it, um, Jack's Classic Fertilizer, and I have a well-balanced fertilizer that I've been sticking to this entire plant journey. I haven't changed it thus far as 2020-20, and I use a quarter strength of it in my gallon of water, and I, I feed it every time I give this plant a good drink of water. Now, they say, okay, you should stop fertilizing your plants uh, when you're reaching the dormancy period. But for me, as long as I'm seeing any form of growth coming from this plant, then I'm going to give it some fertilizer. Now let's talk quickly about pests. Now this plant is pretty hardy, you guys, um, as far as pests are, pests are concerned. However, they can have common pest problems um, such as spider mites, scale, and aphids. But like I said before, you guys, this plant is pretty hardy. If by chance you do happen to experience any form of Pests, you may want to check the plants that surround it because more than likely the spider plant acquired the pest off of one of its neighboring plants. So I would check all of the plants that I have this one in there and found out which one is the culprit. And then of course to treat it you would want to do um, your insecticidal soap is my number one go to and then follow it up with a nice good spray of my neem oil solution. Um, and that's Typically what I would do with pretty much with all my plants is my pre-pest management. Now propagating these plants. Unfortunately this plant um, does not self-propagate like you would see traditionally the regular spider plants that we have um, like the Bonnie spider plant which I do happen to have in my collection. You know those particular spider plants they do self-propagate and give off offshoots that you can snip and actually um, put, put directly into soil and create a new plant this way. But unfortunately for this particular plant baby, it does not do that. Um, now you can propagate this plant by separation, but you want to keep in mind, you guys, that this plant has a is very sensitive root system. Um, so there is a chance that you could shock this plant by separating it this way. Um, remember from earlier, this plant also produces uh, blooms that actually produce seeds in the pods, which I think is pretty cool. I'm not quite sure as far as what your next step would be, um, but let's 
see because I have a small little it's just too small for me to show um, and I believe I showed a photo somewhere a little earlier of what the actual blooms look like um, but as I mentioned before they do have pods which has seeds and you can actually use those as a to create a whole new plant and I just think that's pretty cool now repotting this beautiful plant here um, this plant loves to stay root bound um, so you may want to if you have to repot I recommend probably repotting this plant every two years um, and really gauge it once you get to the two year mark like I said this plant does have a very sensitive root system and it loves to be um, pot, uh, root bound so you may want to take that into consideration when you do pot it up and of course because of that if you do pot it up do not go too big of a size you want to go the next size up so for example if you have a orange pot you want to probably boost it up to maybe <clears throat> excuse me a six inch planter just to be sure six inch maybe eight inch and etc etc now the last thing that I wanted to cover really quick with you guys in regarding this beautiful plant here would be the browning of the leaves. So let's talk about the browning of the leaves. Now, there's two things that could be actually going on um, in regards to browning of the leaves. The first one, of course, would be direct sunlight on the leaves. Now, this will cause the entire leaf itself to actually completely crisp up. And it will also be shriveled in nature, giving you that look of the plant has just been burnt. Um, so that's an indicator that you have it in a place where it's getting direct sun. And if that is the case, you may want to pull it a, a little bit way away from where the light source is. Now, the tips, and I'm not quite sure, but you could actually see, I just kind of like pulled it off. Some of, some of my leaves on here, not a whole lot of them actually, and it doesn't even really bother me. But some of the leaves, probably not even going to see it because it's not that pronounced on the leaves. But some of the tips on my, leaf, on my leaves do have brown tips. Now, what could be causing this? Well, um, one issue for sure that actually could be causing it, and that's if you guys in the plant communities experience this, is that your water from your tap may actually be a little bit too harsh. Uh, for this plant and that could also be causing the burning or brown tips on the end of your leaves. Now one of the things that you can do to remedy that or control it somewhat is, and I do this as well for all my plants because I give all my plants tap water, but I do uh, fill up my jugs here in my home and I let it sit at least 24 hours before I use a tip to use it on my plants. Now if you're um, are able to grab or um, gather rainwater. Rainwater, of course, it with all tropical plants would love this. Um, would love the watering from that. Or, and you can also use bottled water. Uh, but like I said, that's up to you and your wallet and what you're able to afford. For me, like I said, I have too much of a collection where me buying distilled water at this point would be not cost effective for me. So I do use my tap, and like I said, I let it sit out 24 hours before using it, and. I don't know if you can actually see any crispiness, but it doesn't seem to be too much going on with that. Now, another reason that I've noticed, um, and just only in my experience, I don't really have any like documentation on this, but the only another it's been my experience. The reason, another reason for the um, brown tips on the leaves can also be just your, your humidity altogether. So if your humidity is low, like I said, maybe um, if I had to gauge it below my 45% range, then you might want to bump it up as far as the humidity. So you can get yourself a small humidifier to sit beside it, or you can actually take your plant and sit it in a uh, tray with pebbles and just fill it slightly with water. And that's basically not allowing the water to get into your plant, but now the uh, the water is evaporating and it's giving the extra moisture in the air that this plant needs. So that's pretty much it you guys. I'm just going to give you one more look and I like the way I have it going in this pot. And to be honest with you guys too, another thing, I actually had brought, it's two plants in here actually that I, I had one for about a year or so 
and I wanted it to be a little bit fuller than what I had so I actually was lucky enough to come across another one and, and buy this. Um, the good part about this particular plant too is another reason why I'm putting the spotlight on it is not only is it beautiful but it's very easy going on your wallet and it's um, I would consider it a common plant that you probably could find. Um, I, you know, the majority of the plants that I do get you guys, if you've been watching my channel for some time, you'll know that I do a lot of ordering online. And so I've never had the luxury to actually see this plant, like, grown in-house. Um, and, you know, I had to order it, but it did not cost me a lot. So I do know that it's very affordable. So if you get, you know, if you, if you can't afford that beautiful sought after plant because of variegation of particular color or whatever the case may be, then this could be a substitute until you're able to, or at least until when the prices um, come down. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of breaking the, the wallet and I do love trying to save my pennies as much and when as I can. So I strongly recommend this. This is one of those plants that you could just sit in the corner, make sure it gets the proper lighting and you don't have to water it that often. And another thing real quick too before we leave now that I think about water, you guys, when the winter time comes, you won't have to even water it that much. So um, probably in winter time, I would slow it down. So when, it's, when the seasons change, if you actually have a winter-like environment, you guys, wherever you live, um, I recommend probably watering your plant at that point when three inches of the soil has went dry. So that pretty much wraps this segment up, episode number two, you guys. I'm kind of having a good time hanging out here with you guys and putting spotlights on plants that I feel that people are not talking about that often or maybe it's already past this phase and I'm trying to bring it back into the light again. So you guys, you comment below, you let me know if you have this in your collection and any care tips that you can provide for us. Um, let me know because like I said, this channel before is all about us all learning and growing together. So as always, you guys, if you love foliage as much as I do and you love listening to planting things, then you hit that subscribe button. Give me a big thumbs up, please. That will really help my channel. And Or you can give me a thumbs down. Any way you want to vote is all right with me. You guys, enjoy your day wherever you are in the world. And until next time, guys, much love. You can't deny this plant. It is stunning. I mean, look at it.